so far this year. Whenever we had to deal with an exponential notation, the exponent had always been a non-negative integer. We've seen notations like 2 to the cube, negative 3 squared, negative 2 to the fifth, negative 4 squared, etc, etc, where the base is a specific number, or even expressions where the base is a variable, like x squared or a cubed, or even 2x squared minus y cubed squared. In this short unit, we will extend the value of the exponent to integers and to rational numbers. For example, we will give meaning to expression of the type 5 to the negative 1, or 8 to the 2 thirds, or negative 27 to the negative 5 thirds. In this first lecture, we will begin by studying monomial functions, so that in the second lecture, we will be ready to define rational exponents. In order to master the content of this lesson, you will need to recall accurately the terminology and notation about functions and recall the results about graph transformations. Let's begin by defining what is a monomial function. So this defining statement tells us that a monomial function is of the type f of x equals a times x to the n, where a is a real number and n is a natural number. Now let me remind you that in the set of natural number, we have included zero. Okay, so it's all the counting number plus zero. A is called the coefficient of the monomial, while n is called the degree of the monomial. Let's go over a few examples to make sure we understand this statement. Well, example number one is negative 5x4 a monomial. Well, yes it is, because it is written as a monomial. This is the coefficient, a real number, negative 5. That's the variable x. And the exponent is a natural number, 4. So the degree of this monomial is 4, while the coefficient is negative 5. Example number 2. Is this a monomial function? Yes, it is, but please be careful. Where's the coefficient? Well, the coefficient is here. This is a number, pi to the fifth power, while the variable is y, and 2 is a natural number. So here again, we do have a monomial function. The degree is 2, and the coefficient is pi to the fifth power. All right, what about in number 3? Again, we do have a monomial function. This is the coefficient. The variable is t, and 6 is a natural number, so it's a degree. So, yes, degree 6, coefficient square root of 7. Okay, how about number 4? Well, if this is a monomial function, then that would be the coefficient x is a variable. But now look at 1 half. 1 half is not a natural number, therefore it is not a monomial function. So I'm not going to answer this question. They are irrelevant. How about example number 5? Here again, we see that this exponent to the variable is not a natural number, so it is not a monomial function, not defined. Here, do we have a monomial function here? In this case, we do. Where's the variable? The variable is right here. Where's the exponent of the variable? There's no exponent written that's the same as exponent 1. The coefficient is 10 to the 1 half. So this one is a monomial. The degree is 1, and the coefficient is 10 to the 1 half. It's a number. How about number 7? Is this a monomial? That's a tricky case. I don't see a variable here, right? So at first I'm going to say, mm, I don't think so. But actually, you need to remember that anything to the 0 is 1. So first, let's write negative root 5 as negative root 5 times 1. And again, 1 is anything to the 0. So it is 5 to the 0. 1 is also 
2 to the 0, 1 is negative 6 to the 0, but 1 is also x to the 0, or z to the 0, or anything to the 0 is 1. So you can write this as negative root 5 times x to the 0, because this is 1. And 0 is a natural number. Now, when I write it like this, I write it as a monomial. So yes, it is a monomial. The degree is 0, that's the exponent right here, and the coefficient is negative square root of 5. All right, let's look at number 8. Is this a monomial? Well, in this case, I do see the variable right here. So that's my coefficient. The power is a natural number. So yes, it is a monomial. It is a monomial. The degree is 7, and the coefficient is 5 to the negative 3. It doesn't matter that this exponent is negative, okay? because it is not the variable, so it doesn't matter. How about number 9 now? Well, in number 9, I'm going to use the same trick that I used in number 7. I guess the notation got erased right here. We wrote x to the 0. So this is the same as 0 times, I'm going to use t to the 0, because t to the 0 is the same as 1. So yes, it is a monomial. The degree is 0, and the coefficient is 0. All right? Not very interesting. And again, um, this is a real number, so we can write it as k times x to the 0. So yes, it is a monomial. The degree again is 0, and the coefficient is k, which is a real number. Okay? All right. Let's now look at the graph of monomial functions. I'm going to first look at the graph of the function y equals x cubed and then y equals x to the fourth. How do I do that? Well, I'm just going to take some input and find their corresponding output. Okay, so here, let's get some input right here and we'll see the corresponding output. So let's say x equals negative 2. So negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So if x is negative 2, y is negative 8, right here. Let's take x equals negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1, right? Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. I'll plot it after. Now, if x is 0, 0 cubed is 0. If x is 1, 1 cubed is 1. And if x is 2, 2 cubed is 8. Let's plot all these points now. I said negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 0 cubed is 0. 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed, 27. I just don't have any room right here on this window, right? So let's connect the point. And this is a graph of y equals x cubed. Please make sure you're familiar with it. Again, how did I graph it? By looking at input output, OK? Let's now look at the graph of y equals x to the fourth. OK, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to be looking at some inputs and outputs of the function x to the 4. So if x is negative 2, negative 2 to the 4th is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, that is 16. If x is negative 1, negative 1 to the 4th is 1, 0 to the 4th is 0, 1 to the 4th is 1, and 2 to the 4th is 16. If I look at 3 to the 4th, uh, I don't have room in the window. 3 to the 4th is 81. Let's plot all the points that I have found right here. So negative 2 to the 4th, I said 16. Oh, I don't even have room for that. Negative 1 to the 4th is 1. 0 to the 4th is 0. And 1 to the 4th is 1. See, I don't even have room for 2 to the 4th, which is 16. So it's pretty high right here, right? 2 to the 4th. Um, this is 8, so it would be the double. So I'm going to make it very steep like this. Like this, OK? All right. So again, to graph this one, I used a chart input output. Let's now take a look at more monomial functions. So I'm going to use Desmos. And you can see that right here, I'm just looking at x to the n. And in this case, I'm going to look at n even. OK, let's see. n equals 2. Well, we know this one. That's a parabola. y equals x squared. n equals 4. We just went over it, right? OK, what about n equals 6? It's, uh, it's again, a u-shaped graph, uh, narrower. 
n equals 8, an even narrower. So the graph gets narrow and narrow, right? As the exponent increases, graph gets narrow. All right. Well, what about when the exponents are odd? Now, these were all exponent even, right? Between 2 and 10. So now let's look at the graph y equals x to the n when n is an odd integer. Here, n equals 1, we recognize the line y equals x. n equals 3. That's the one we just went over. Now let's take n equals 5. And again, we see that as the exponent increases, that's n equals 7, n equals 9, n equals 11. We see as the exponent increases that the lines are getting straighter and straighter in both directions. Okay? So we have two distinct family of graphs. The graph y equals xn when n is odd and the graph y equals xn when n is even, okay? Um, right here, for example, you have n equals 1. This one is n equals 3. And uh, you can see, as the power increases, the graph are getting straighter and straighter. n equals 5, n equals 7 is right in the middle, and the last one is n equals 11 right here. Same thing here. Um, y equals x to the 0, x to the 0, we just went over it at the beginning of the lesson. Anything to the 0 is 1, so this is just y equals 1. Okay, so this value right here is 1. Y equals x squared, we know this one, that's a parabola. I just went over y equals x to the fourth, and here I added y equals x to the sixth and y equals x to the tenth. All the graph y equals x n when n is even are shaped like a u. They're all shaped like a u. While uh, the graph y equals x n when n is not are not shaped like a u. Let's now do some graph transformation on these graphs. This is example number 11 from your notes. So I need to graph y equals negative 4x cubed. What are the graph transformation? What do I start with? Well, I start with y equals x cubed, and then we go to y equals 4x cubed. That's a vertical dilation. And then we do y equals negative 4x cubed, and that's a reflection across the x axis. So what does the graph y equals x cubed look like? Well, we just went over this one. This is a graph that looks like this, right? It's not a U shape because my exponent is odd. And you need to know a couple of points on it. Uh, we know we have 1, 1. 1 cubed is 1 and 2 cubed is 8. These are really the points I want you to remember on it. And then, of course, on the other side, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, and negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 2, negative 8 right here, okay? All right, so what happened to this point when you do the vertical dilation? Well, the y is getting multiplied by 4, right? So 1, 1 goes to 1, 4, uh, 2, 8 goes to 2, 32. This is going to be way too high. I won't have room to graph it. And so negative 1, 1 goes to negative 1, negative 4. So this is my second graph right here. And then what happens to this graph? I will reflect it across the x-axis, okay? And so 1, 4 right here is going to go to 1, negative 4. Okay, that was a refresher on graph transformation. Let's apply that right now. So let me graph first y equals x cubed. So 1, 1, 2, 8, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 8 right here. Here's y equals x cubed, and it goes to 0, 0, okay? Then y equals 4 x cubed, I multiply the y by 4, so 1, 4. This one is out of the picture, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 4, right here. Goes like this. And then uh, y equals negative 4 to the x cubed. This is a reflection. So 1, 4 goes to 1, negative 4. 0, 0 stays here. And negative 1, negative 4 goes to negative 1, 4. Here's a graph y equals negative 4 to the x cubed. All right, next one. Okay, let's go over example number 12. How can I graph g of x equals negative 5x to the fourth? Now, um, if I look at graph transformation, I know I'm going to start with x to the fourth. We know what this one looks like. It's a u-shaped graph pretty steep. Remember the points? 0, 0, right? 1 to the fourth is 1 right here, 1, 1, negative 1 to the 4th is 1, 
And then 2 to the 4th is pretty high, right? 2 to the 4th is 16, so it's 216. Uh, as you can see right here on this window, I don't have any uh, negative 16 to, to plot, right? So I'm not going to show this point right here. Then what happens to this graph? Well, we have a vertical dilation by a factor of 5, right? So um, 0, 0 is going to stay where it is right here. 0 times 5 is 0. 1 times 5 is 5. So this is going to become 1, 5 and negative 1, 5. And these really are the only points I'm going to get on the second graph right here. Uh, I didn't even have this one. So if I multiply 16 by 5, it's completely out. It's like 80, right? And then finally, uh, I have a reflection across the x-axis right here and so I'm going to reflect all these points that I had so I'm reflecting uh, this point which was 1 5 right so it's going to go to 1 negative 5 right here and then negative 1 5 will go to negative 1 negative 5 and then 0 0 is going to stay right here so I'm going to have a graph like this and these are the only three points I'm going to be plotting uh, the variation of negative 5 x 4 quickly gets some very large numbers so I'm not going to represent them okay so I have 0 0 negative 1 negative 5 and 1 negative 5 right here it's a U-shaped graph, but it's reversed. The U is reversed. Very steep, very quickly increasing. Let's go over the next example. So in example number 13, how do we plot h of x equals 8x to the 5? If you follow graph transformation, you start by x to the 5, and then you have a vertical dilation by a factor of 8. x to the 5 is a pretty steep graph, right? To remember, as the exponent increases, the graph are getting steeper and steeper, right? x to the 5 looks like this right here, right? Uh, 1 to the 5 is 1, negative 1 to the 5 is negative 1, and then 2 to the 5 is 32. So it's going to be way too big. And so how do we plot 8x to the 5? We just take these two points right here, actually 3 if you count 0, and we multiply the y coordinate of the points by 8. So 1, 1 is going to go to 1, 8, negative 1, negative 1 is going to go to negative 1, negative 8 right here, and we're going to get this graph. So I said 1, 8, negative 1, negative 8, and 0, 0. Again, very steep graph. Let's do a few more graph transformation. Okay, let's now go over example number 14. So you can see right here there are more transformation to uh, basic graphs. Okay, so how do we get to uh, k of x equals negative 4 times x minus 3 cubed minus 2? Well, we'll start with x cubed. Okay, and we know this graph. We've done it a few times. Then from x cubed, I'll go to y equals x minus 3 cubed. That's a horizontal translation, three units to the right. Then from here, I'll go to y equals 4 times x minus 3 cubed. This is a vertical dilation by a factor of 4. I'm playing with the y's now. Then from here, I'll go to y equals negative 4 times x minus 3 cubed. This is going to be a reflection across the x-axis. And finally, I'll land on y equals negative 4 x minus 3 cubed minus 2 vertical translation two units down. So let's follow the sequence. So we start with y equals x cubed, 0, 0, 1 cubed, 1, 2 cubed, 8, negative 1 cubed, negative 1, negative 2 cubed, negative 8 is this graph right here, okay? Like that, and then like that, okay? Next, what do I do? y equals x minus 3 cubed, so 3 units to the right, so 1, 2, 3, this point goes right here, 3 units to the right, right here, 3 to the right, here, 3 to the right, like that, and C3 to the right, right here is here. Here is the second graph, y equals x minus 3 cubed. All right, what's the next one? 4 times x minus 3 cubed, so I'll multiply all the y's by 4. So when 0 gets multiplied by 4, it's going to stay right here. 1 times 4 4 right here. Uh, 8 times 4 is out of the picture. Negative 1 times 4, negative 4. So I have this graph right here, only three points. The y value of the other two points that I had before are out of the picture here. So the next one is negative 4 
times x minus 3 cubed. So I'm going to reflect this graph across the x-axis, right? So this point goes right here, 0 stays right here, and negative 4 goes to plus 4 right here. So that's a graph we have. And then finally, the last one, negative 4 x minus 3 cubed minus 2. So I'm taking these three points and move them down by 2. So this one goes right here, this one goes right here, and this one goes right here. Here we go. So I only have three points right here. That is enough for this graph. Okay, let's go over the last example. Okay, what do I start here? I start with y equals x to the fourth. So I know this is a u-shaped graph, right? Next, I go to x plus 2 to the fourth. So that's two units to the left. Next is y equals 4 times x plus 2 to the fourth. So this is a vertical dilation by a factor of 4. Next one is y equals negative 4x plus 2 to the fourth. This is a reflection across the x-axis. The last one is y equals negative 4x plus 2 to the fourth plus 5. I'm going up five units. Okay, let's do that. So we start with x to the fourth. We know that these are very, very steep graph, right? Uh, 0, 0, 1 to the fourth is 1, negative 1 to the fourth is 1, 2 to the fourth is 16, so it goes like this, very steep, up like this, okay? Next, what do we do? Two units to the left, okay? So 0, 0 goes to negative 2, 0. This one, two units to the left goes right here. Two units to the left goes right here on top of this one. So this is my second graph like this. Okay, next one, multiply all the y's by 4. This one doesn't move. 1 times 4, 4. 1 times 4, 4, right here. So this is even a steeper graph, right? This is a dilation, vertical dilation by a factor of 4. Next is the reflection across the x-axis. So again, this point stays right here. 4 goes to negative 4. And here again, 4 goes to negative 4 right here. So we have the u-shape now is downward. And finally, we have plus 5. So I'm moving all the points 5 units up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right here. I could wonder if it were possible to catch another point. I don't think so. I think the next one right here would be uh, lower, okay? That's it for this video. I hope it was clear. Thank you for watching.